have to give a give a small shout out to Emmanuel Gan uh, at the WTO, uh, and and we'll be producing a report on a lot of these standardisation and interoperability in initiatives within the next couple of weeks or so. George, so so I guess get it going into a bit more detail on on these points. Where where are the challenges? Are these projects interoperable? Or do you also think that we are seeing digital islands and silos appear? Um, there, there, there is uh, obviously a lot of work uh, being done on, on digital. Um, uh, I, I don't think it, it is being addressed at the, at, at the point um, which I'm, which I've been, you know, speaking about around, you know, solving this portfolio problem, um, uh, and uh, it's quite a new idea, um, and it's not necessarily well understood or, or you know, across the uh, across the market. Um, uh, so, you know, there are there are clearly. Um, you know, aside from the sort of you know blockchain hysteria that's uh, in trade that's be, that's been around for an, a number of years, there are there are a number of, of programs initiatives, um, all looking largely at at, at digitalizing um, you know uh, LC bills of lading, you know the processing of trade finance, which is absolutely critical. I, I, you know and. And if we've learned anything out of COVID you know, and the physical lockdown of ports, you know, that, that, that is the way uh, that trade will go and needs to go. And we need to move away from the analog processes that have been around for you know, decades um, into digital. Um, but uh, you know, if, if we can um, uh, use that same digital technology to solve what is ultimately a, a data problem, Either, either the DFIs and the multilaterals, and even the even the banks who are willing to lend money into uh, into African trade, you know, might need to you know walk back from their requirement, their evidential requirements of exactly where the money is going, um, or we need to solve what is a what is a a, a very large data problem, um, and clearly that the the solution to that data problem. You know, just seems intuitively obvious. Should be digital. Um, at the moment, that is not being addressed by the community um, as as a whole. Uh, and you know, if, if we could pull together to get some kind of uh, of digital solution to curate these huge portfolios of uh, of you know very short lived. Um, uh, revolving MSME trade transactions uh, uh, into an evidential format that the that the 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 credit or the liquidity providers were happy to say. You're right, I, I'm now confident that I understand that 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 my support is is going towards African trade finance. I can see all the details, um, uh, and you know if we can rally together to do that. Um, uh, you know, then, you know, that would be a huge step forward and would really, I think, you, you know, um, make a big dent in the trade gap. The problem is that at the moment, the people who suffer that uh, and the people who are supposed to be solving it are the, are the, are the, last, <laughs> are the last groups who, who should be doing that. They're African banks, you know, small African banks, even, even regional African banks, you know, trying to solve um, a global problem uh, individually at the transactional level. So, you know, if we could come together as a community and, you know, harness the, 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 the um, intent and support of, of the DFIs, you know, along with global fintechs, global, you know, IT companies, you know, who, who would, you know, be able to you know, really make a difference um, uh, and you know they're clearly the right people with the right kind of technical expertise to solve this. You know, uh, on a global on a global basis. You know, um, uh, you know that would I, I think pretty clearly be the way forward. But just hoping that individual banks are all going to come up with their individual 
uh, responses in Africa and, and in Southeast Asia and in the rest of the emerging markets is, is just, not, uh, just not going to be successful. Thanks, George. Very, very much a, a global response needed to, to some of these uh, 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 challenges. And actually a shout out to, to Matt Gamza at the SME Finance Forum, uh, which is the lead partner for implementing some of the G20's SME financing and work. And, and we definitely recommend the report they've just issued on digital financial inclusion of women youth and, and SMEs issued under the, the Saudi presidency. So happy to send through more details on that later on. And, and, and I guess on the same note of, of global initiatives, Nana, can you talk about the ICC DSI initiative, which is obviously recently reported a new director, uh, which is sponsored by the Asian Development Bank? Um, sure, thank you. Um, launching of the Digital Standards Initiative, DSI, uh, funded by ADB's Trade and Supply Chain Finance Program and the Government of Singapore, uh, is an important development uh, during the pandemic on the digitalization front. Um, this initiative is being uh, housed at the International Chamber of Commerce um, and uh, DSI is a cross industry effort to enable the standardization of digital trade. We believe uh, that DSI is unique among the trade digitalization in initiatives due to its uh, collective nature. Uh, so too often digitalization is enacted through bilateral agreements between institutions uh, that require members to run on the same platform, uh, which resulted in a bespoke trade and trade um, finance processes. So the DSI seeks to coordinate all parties in the standardization of data formats and processes rather than duplicate existing efforts. Efforts. The vision uh, for DSI uh, is to drive seamless digital trade through the entire trade ecosystem, from exporters to shipping, ports, customs, warehousing, um, uh, finance, and importers. Uh, this would be transformational uh, in our view on many levels, um, and we are excited about this initiative and uh, will remain closely involved. Uh, ICC uh, anticipates the implementation of a full uh, time management team. Um, and the global and diverse steering committee to provide guidance and set priorities for this project. Um, uh, this will promote greater economic uh, inclusion through the development of open uh, trade standards and uh, will uh, facilitate, uh, facilitate technical alignment uh, among different blockchain based networks and technology platforms that have entered uh, into the trade space uh, during these years. Um, that's what we have in, in our mind. And uh, of course, we will keep uh, the uh, industry updated on the developments. Thanks, Nana. And Chris, can you let, let's talk more about this and more specifically, can you talk about your recent initiative, the ICC Digital Trade Roadmap? Yeah, it's interesting, uh, listening to Nana, actually. I was just talking to Oswald Carlo, the MD of uh, the uh, Digital Status Initiative this morning. Um, you know, it's, it's really it's a really exciting project and, um, you know, an area that we've all been looking at for, for quite a long time. I mean, the digital trade roadmap goes back, you know, a good couple of years now, and it was really designed and still remains as a, a sort of macro framework uh, for all of us to be able to understand the, the three big pillars of work, one on uh, legal reform, legal frameworks and policy frameworks. Those need to be modernized and updated and in some case put into place much of the world doesn't have data protection laws or consumer protection laws or competition laws. You know, all those sort of basic, you know, what I call building blocks need to be in place. Pillar two is really around interoperable standards. And that's the role of the Digital Standards Initiative uh, is to now start to connect the platforms so that there is more seamless, uh, frictionless activity uh, between the different uh, initiative sectors, platforms uh, and activities. And then pillar three, is really much more around participation and adoption. That's, that's about industry itself um, doing everything it can to take the opportunity to digitize. And, and again, I think actually COVID is, is a useful opportunity to do that. It's a moment in time when you can start to put in place the structures and systems and processes, not just for banks, but in the corporate and the SME community too, to really optimize use of the digital economy. Uh, and that means more market opportunities, uh, more opportunities to trade, more platforms to use, et cetera. 
So, you know, the, the, the roadmap is there uh, as a framework to use. It, it's there designed specifically for policymakers who generally don't understand what the uh, particularly trade finance community talk about. Uh, it's very, very technical. It's full of jargon. Um, and and it's, it's really important. If we want governments to modernize frameworks, then we've got to speak in a language they understand, uh, in a framework which, which makes sense, um, and, and help guide through that process. And that's really ultimately what the key role of the roadmap is there to do. Thanks, Chris. A, a very important framework there. Claire, let's talk about data. How can we use the numerous data points we now have to look at risk from a completely different perspective? Sure, Depeche. I mean, we talked, you know, I've just talked about the work we're doing in Asia uh, with our partners and, and the support of ADB and, and similar work we've, we've done across Africa. Um, and hopefully that brings it alive in terms of, you know, we, we don't need big technological revolutions to happen. Data is there in front of us. It's really about kind of digitizing that and working collectively with the partners with a common aim. And I think that's the key. Um, you know, George talked about we have to get away from working as individual contributors because that's just as not got us where we needed to get to. So I think the power of the partnerships, look, the tools and technology is there around data, right? Um, we've had applied technologies. If you think about, you know, using AI for, for intelligent credit decisioning and getting to fast decisions. We've got you know, open banking here in, in Europe and obviously taking off. Uh, that, that can give you access to companies' data and individuals in, in ways that we never had before. Um, we, you know, we talk about, and we, we very much believe in the creation of, of a corporate digital identity. Clearly blockchain will be part of that. It's not gonna happen overnight, but you've got to invest now to get us there in 12, 24, 36 months. So there, is, there are tactical immediate opportunities to digitize and there are strategic goals, which we're all um, aiming for. But the key is we've got to do it collectively and we've got to do it in steps and not wait for the big bang. And we can clear, we've clearly evidence that we can, we can make a difference by coming together and doing things differently uh, and being a little bit more creative uh, about how we do these things and maybe taking a little bit more risk in, 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 in how we're solutioning them. And, but I think the, the, the crisis is, is really creating the impetus to step on the pedal to, as, as a good crisis always does, you know, that creates the, the, the impetus, but also you see, you see people being a lot more creative and innovative because it's necessity and it has to be. Yes, absolutely. And I, I think the work you're you're doing with with Unilever and, and some of their smaller suppliers is is really interesting. And that continuous innovative thinking is, is really important during during times like this. 